Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. Now, last night I did a couple of quick flash videos, and we will be doing the story on both of them because I know that uh, the Nicholas Sturgeon one is of interest. But I thought we'll start with the Ross Greer because he's so unimportant. Let's just get him out of the way. He is, of course, the most milk soppiest mummy's boy, a tofu wielding warrior who's never had a real job has never been educated and has somehow found himself onto the Greens list to become an MSP. And he thinks that gives him the right to tell us how to live. And he thinks it makes him important. Certainly he thinks he's more important than the UK government as he's stamping his tiny vegan feet and telling them to please carry on funding Hamas. Obviously, he's very anti-Semitic as well. One can only imagine the joy he is at parties. Well, of course, the UK government are just going to ignore him because he literally is nobody and nothing. But we'll take a look at the story to see why this drives him so mad and is therefore quite amusing to everyone else. Here it goes. So Gross Rear demands the UK government resume funding to tourist-linked UNRWA amid the Israeli row. Because of course he does. He doesn't like Israelis. He doesn't like Jews. He's very anti-Semitic. And if he can get Hamas to end them, to genocide them, that would fit perfectly in line with his party's policies, of course. He's very supportive of that kind of thing. And it makes you wonder, because of course, if Hamas did win and Muslims take over the world and whatever, he's the last person who'd actually want that. They'd find him and Patrick together, and then they'd throw them out of a window from a very great height. It makes you wonder the stupidity of these people who are actually trying to protect those and promote those who would kill them. It's almost as though he's a complete and utter moron, isn't it? Although I don't think he can be a complete and utter anything. He lacks the ability to complete a task. Certainly couldn't complete his degree. Anyway, the Scottish Greens MSP has claimed that Rishi Sunak will be complicit in famine if he refuses to begin offering funding and aid to the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, UNRWA. Uh, this is despite some employee, employees being involved in the Hamas attack on Gaza. Also, surely, why is it Israel's job to feed Palestine? Two things. Palestine has a port. It can bring food in that way. And secondly, Palestine has a land border with Egypt and it can get aid that way. And you have to ask... Why is no one sending aid to Palestine through the sea? And why isn't Egypt putting aid in through the Egyptian border? That is an important question. So he needs to be asking, why is, Israel, why is Egypt not helping Palestine? We understand why Israel isn't, because they keep killing Israeli babies. But they haven't killed Egyptian babies yet, have they? Who knows? Scottish Greens MSP Ross Greer has demanded, demanded stamps feet, uh, that the UK government resume funding the UN Relief and Works Agency, UNRWA, despite it being linked to the October the 7th atrocities in Gaza. Rishi Sunak joined a number of world leaders in pausing any aid to the controversial agency, an agency filled with anti-Western, uh, pro-hate, anti-Jewish, anti-Semitic, um, well... Barber, barbarous, um, barbarians, barbers, barbarians. Uh, even the U European Union, often praised by the nationalists, are investigating whether to send any more help to UNRWA. They've paused it until further notice. Uh, this is until a full independent investigation into the accusations that some of its employees took part in a mass attack on Israel last year. And in fact, it's no longer accusations. They have fired these people because they have the proof that they did. Uh, a number of staff members have already been sacked over this, as I say. Despite world leaders like the USA and Australia leading the boycott, Mr Greer wants Westminster to listen to the Scottish Greens and restart aid because he says there hasn't been enough Jews killed yet, apparently. Uh, he claims that if the UK government don't do this, it'll be complicit in famine. No, I don't think he understands what famine is. Uh, not having food is not a famine. Food not growing is a famine. And there's plenty of food. They're just not allowing it to go through. Uh, it's a completely different thing. But of course, he doesn't have that intelligence, does he? He's a very stupid man. Um, basically, they're starving them out, but um, they're not stopping the food going in. Of course, nobody is blockading the port and nobody's stopping food coming in from Egypt. Uh, they're just closing their border to stop the murderers coming in to Israel. 
And to be honest, can you blame them? You have to ask. I mean, he's going on about this, but you have to ask, does Mr Greer have a front door of his mummy's house? You know, when he lives in his mummy's spare room, does his mummy shut the door at night and lock it? Do they have a fence around their garden? Is that to keep people out? Yes. Hypocritical twonk, isn't he? Anyway, the Scottish Government confirmed it had paused funding before being overruled by Hamza Yousaf, who insisted this wasn't true and that he just didn't have any more cash to give because they've already given £750,000 of taxpayers' money to Hamas in order to help them kill Jews. Following the accusations, the UN condemned the abhorrent alleged acts and sacked nine of the 12 accused workers, while two are reported to have died and the last one is still being identified. The agency warned that if the funding continues to be paused, it would no longer be able to help the Palestinians. Oh dear, boo-hoo, what a shame. Uh, aid is still being filtered to Gaza through other means, but Mr Greer is demanding that Mr Sunak end his pause while the probe is ongoing. He points to evidence from Michael Fakiri, the UN Special Rapporteur, on the right to food, who said that without under support, the prospect of famine in Gaza will go from being imminent to being inevitable. Well, it's simple. The Gazans, all they have to do is hand over all the members of Hamas and release all the hostages. There you go. The irony, of course, is that up until this point, the biggest employer of Gazans was Israel. And indeed, the only way that Gaza could exist was by, Is by the Gazans coming into Israel to work. And it's... Now, that's not the case, and so they're all going hungry and poor and all that, but they've done it to themselves. You have to ask, why does no one else in the Muslim world want to help the Palestinians? It's because the other Muslim countries don't like the Palestinians either. Uh, anyway, Mr Greer said, the humanitarian crisis caused by the Gazans is horrific, and it's getting worse by the day. Cutting life-saving aid will add a totally avoidable famine to the atrocities inflicted on the Palestinian people by the Palestinian people. UN aid is a vital lifeline. Should have thought of that, shouldn't you? Uh, cutting it is a collective punishment. No, it's not. No, it's not. Not at all. No one is cutting the aid. What they've done is close the border. No one. You point to anyone who's cut aid. Nobody has. They can still get their stuff in through the sea and the land and nobody's doing it. Now, if you're saying, oh, well, look, uh, United Nations aren't doing it. Well, that's because the United Nations are complicit in the murder of Jews, you stupid, ignorant twat, for the want of a better word. Uh, he says a ceasefire is more vital than ever. Well, tell the Gazans to put their guns down then. He says the International Court of Justice, the highest court in the world, has ordered Israel to make immediate action to prevent genocide. Well, it isn't genocide, is it? They're not killing an entire race. They're killing terrorists. Cutting aid flies in the face of that judgment. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It enforces the will of the world to stop these people from doing what they're doing. Would you give succour to those that are killing you? No. Why? Because that would be stupid. But then this is Ross Greer we're talking about, and he's incredibly stupid. It's like if the Russians started rumbling across Europe, coming for Britain, he'd tell, you know, he'd, he'd be going, oh, but there's Russians dying, quick, give them aid. As the Germans are killing, look, the Germans are killing the Russians as they're marching across Germany. We must give the Russians aid. That's exactly the kind of thing that Ross Greer is pushing. It's no different. The man deserves to be taken out the back and shown a rope. Only for the rest of us to just... I mean, honestly, if he died tomorrow, you could almost feel the average IQ of the world go up a notch, couldn't you? He's so stupid. Scotland and Ireland are the only two countries in the world that have refused to stop funding UNRWA. And we know why. Scotland led by a Muslim and Ireland filled with Muslims. I'll come up. A strange thing occurs here. The United Kingdom have stopped aid. That is the United Kingdom national policy. If Hamza Yousaf continues to give aid, that's breaking national policy. That's touching, I think, on treason. He could be damaging the interests of Britain by his actions. So that needs to be looked at. I think Hamza Yousaf is a security risk to this country. And I hope that the security services are deeply looking into it. I would also point out that Hamza Yousaf, since taking over, has given a lot of money in aid around the world. It's not his place. He's not the national leader. He is a 
basically uh, a regional governor, but he's not the national leader, and it's the United Kingdom that deals with international aid. That is, a, a, you know, a devolved. That's not a devolved matter, rather, and he shouldn't be giving taxpayers' money, Scottish taxpayers' money, away without the permission of Scotland. Where was that in the manifesto? That wasn't. And the other thing, of course, is that since he's been taken over, every single penny and aid that he's given around the world has been exclusively to Muslim countries, including 200,000 to his own mother. Kind of uh, lets you know what happens when you have a Muslim in chief controlling your country, doesn't it? Anyway, we shall round up there. Thank you very much for watching. Do please hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, leave a like, leave a comment, please share the video. And remember, Ross Greer is nothing. He's an empty, vacuous piece of dripping sponge. He's a mop, isn't he? He's a little mop. Anyway, till next time, stay safe, stay well, and I will speak to you later. Bye.